Thursday morning, New York City. What is up? Boomer and Geo program coming to you live in the Built Ford Tub studio on the fan and across the country on CBS Sports Network. We've got Eddie. We've got Al. We've got Peter Schwartz. We don't have Boomer. We don't have Geo. Joe B, he's not here. So instead with me, it's football season. Why the hell not? How about former Steeler, former Jet, former Hofstra man, Willie Cologne. Willie, good morning. How are you, sir? Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Ah, thanks for coming in. How you been? All right? I've been rocking and rolling. It's been a busy summer, so I'm, I'm happy to be in the seat kind of talking sports. I see you were pulling like the uh, the old uh, Chris Lepresti last night, SNY yesterday, fan yeah. today, talking a lot of Jets football, which we will obviously get into. It's kind of cool that uh, I know last week we had a Hall of Fame game, but like football, forget the scrimmages. We'll get to those at some point this morning and all the, the nonsense with that, but it's kind of cool. Tonight to me signifies – the actual start of football season when, while I know a lot of guys don't play, in some cases nobody plays other than the second and third and fourth teamers, tonight <laughs> I mean, tonight that signifies the, uh, the start of the football. I'm sorry. Can someone please explain to me <laughs> why what's on the TV screen is on the TV screen? Yeah, why I brought that up get? to Peter this morning. It looked like someone was trying to watch adult films last I will night. I just say, the th- one second, Willie. There is that, on the TV that, screen. That's a somebody's setting us up, right? Uh, I'll just two words that are in the title because I can't say any of the Jay, other I'll be, I'm gonna be honest with you. I just glanced over there and I froze. <laughs> Mom's ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now do what you want with it, <laughs> but that's on our TV screen, and I don't know who was trying to watch that last night. But that's a weird one to I leave just, off. I just <laughs> hope it's not somebody I shook their hand and coming in this morning. <laughs> That's that's what I'm. It's about. actually circular. Like there's different titles come up throughout the. So are you change. telling me that someone just landed on the porn channel Correct. and left it? Yeah, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So we've got mom's ass, and on top of it, we've got Gary and Keith in Colorado on a replay <laughs> from the Mets and the Rockies. All right. Sorry for the distraction. Yes. Yeah, so you were saying we it starts football season really tonight, and you, you, the juices start get flowing. Yeah, listen, this is this is the time where it starts to get real for a lot of these guys, right? You, you've been training all summer. You've been kind of getting after it. And now you're at the point right now where you get to hit somebody different, right? And, and you know, coaches you know, coaches have a hard job of just getting these guys to the starting line, getting them healthy. But now it's evaluation. Now you have to say, all right, what are we really doing? And I, me and Bart were talking about it yesterday uh, on SNY. This is this is a time where you know you go into camp, you have a checklist, you start kind of hitting the boxes of where you're at as a ball call, as a ball club, and what you got going. So we'll see. I I, I love this time of year because it's just football on, mm-hmm. right? I'm I'm tired of watching reality shows and fixer upper shows and and Top Chef and all that nonsense. Now we can see some ball get going. So I'm I'm happy about. it. And we've got two teams here in New York that are in different situations. You've got a team in the Jets who are clearly thinking Super Bowl. I mean, they're thinking division title, uh, stay healthy, division title, make a run in the postseason. I mean, they're, they're, they're locked and loaded. The roster's fantastic if they stay healthy. Yep. Then you got a team in the Giants that I don't – yeah, I don't know what to expect from them from this standpoint. I think defensively they don't they've done some really good things. I think they're going to get after the quarterback, which can wreck games, as we know. Sure. Um, you've got a quarterback coming back off a, a serious injury who looks good so far, an electric receiver they drafted. You don't know about the offensive line. When you go into camps, like I, I imagine, I mean, you played for you were with Rex for two, is that right, or one? Uh, roughly two, yeah, yeah. All right, so you had you had Rex where think, yeah. they were. You guys were relatively good. I know the last year didn't go great, and then it was what bowls, I guess, for bowls, one year. Bowls, yes, yeah. So that would have been more of a. I avoided the Adam Gase taco yeah, massacre and the yeah the, the tacos the and the floaties yeah, yeah exactly I avoided that. So you, I mean, you've seen it from different ends of the spectrum. Good team you know, with the Steelers, obviously good teams, bad teams. The difference in these camps are what exactly for teams that are heading in different directions. Well, you know, I, I think so. To go to your point, my, my time with the Steelers, man, we you know I got drafted in '06. As we're coming right off the of Super Bowl, so this team was loaded. They a lot of veterans, so a lot of guys knew who they were and what their purpose. And then there was a moxie to the team, right? You win a Super Bowl, now you're, you know, you're walking into every stadium like you're Stone Cold Steve Austin. Mm. But overall, everybody was extremely selfless. Um, there wasn't a challenge that we weren't willing to accept. We always had the mindset we can beat you up in any back alley. We weren't afraid of that. But we had to get smarter along the way. And a lot of good teams, man, they just know who they are. There's a mold and there's a sta- there's a stand mm. in which they play at, and they understand when they turn on the ta- on the tape who they are and what they're not. And sometimes when you're a team in development, 
you're kind of figuring that as you go because young guys have to come with you. You know, like I, it, you know, think about the Jets right now. They're in a situation where Aaron it doesn't need validation. Everybody knows who, mm-hmm. who Aaron Rodgers is, but there's some guys, even with the accolades they've been able to acquire, like a Sauce Gardner or a Quentin Williams. The Pro Bowls are great, but you still got to get to a playoff game. You still got to win. And so, you know, to the shout out to the great Joe Beningo. Um, I I know he went on his rant Monday. Always and, does. <laughs> but I kind of feel him like this. This fan base has been burnt enough. It, as much as as happy we are about Aaron Rodgers and as as happy we are about Brees Hall and this, how great this defense looks, man. You got to win. You know that, that that's the ultimate deodorant. So. We'll see what happens, man, but I'm glad football is up and going. Well, and the biggest thing is you got to play. I mean, you know, you you, you go back, we've talked about it a million times since the opener last year. You know, it's all well and good, and I sit there and I look at this roster and I see Super Bowl championship caliber team. Correct. But I also know if something happens week one on the first series like it did last year, things are, I know they got a much better backup this year, but it's not the same. Well, it all comes down to the health of this offensive line. Mm -hmm. Like, there has been reports about Tyron Smith dealing with tightness, which I hate, by the way. I mean, we're in training camp. There's well, not a person in the NFL who's not dealing with tightness. I was dealing with tightness stepping out of the car this morning. You I'm know sure. What I mean? <laughs> and so the issue with Tyron Smith is at this point, they drafted the young fellow out of uh, Penn State, uh, Ashan or Afosinu, if you will. I know I'm chopping his name up. But they have to make they have to get him ready as he's a day one starter because they don't know what they're going to get out of Tyron Smith. Right? He looks, he looks solid right now. They're going to treat him with kid gloves. But if he's not able to go, if there's a setback, you can't you cannot be the Jets right now from a standpoint where you get caught with your pants down again like last year. Like nothing worked. The office line fell apart. Mm-hmm. Zach Wilson wasn't what, what, what they needed him to be. The defense played as hard as they possibly can. They won seven games without Aaron Rodgers. So you have to believe with Aaron Rodgers in the fold, they're going to be a lot better. You would certainly think so. And Tyron Smith, so I do um, pregame, postgame for the Cowboys national radio broadcast on Compass Media Network. So I've been – and I'm a Cowboy fan, too, oh, by the way. but I did not point, know that. Point is, I'm, I'm well-versed in Tyron Smith. Here's what I would tell you about Love him. Love the big fella. If it's not his back, he plays. Like, that dude. Well, he suffered multiple injuries last year, right? He did, but he played through a lot of them. The one that has really been difficult for him to play through is the back injury. It's brutal. Have you ever had back injuries? Uh, yes. I have had many back injuries. I have right. many back issues, so I know how debilitating it can it's be. It's brutal. Sore ankle, sore arm, shoulder. That dude's out there, but the back is the one thing. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to, to stop a bull about. rush when you're going through back spasms. Oh, I can imagine. I don't, yeah. I don't know how you could even be on the field if you've got back problems or back spasms. But I, I actually think, especially him coming over to a new team, I think he will be out there every which way he can, no matter what it is, if it's not the back. So I agree with you with the back tightness. Yeah. And you're right. Seven wins without Aaron Rodgers. I mean, if he's not good enough for the way they didn't let uh, Zach Wilson at least try and play, maybe they knew something we don't. Who knows? Um, he's got to be worth five or six more wins, just given the way they lost games last year. Well, the question is, who does the offense go through, right? Is it going to go through Aaron Rodgers or Brees Hall? Because Brees Hall, I thought, was the X factor last year. Even with the shaky patchwork offensive line and the shaky offensive line, he was able to make hay. Now with a healthy offensive line, you got Simpson, you got Eric Tucker, Titman at center, Morgan Moses, who I thought Mm -hmm. we should have never let go, who went to Baltimore, absolutely balled out and came back, was able to acquire him. Um, we should be where we need to be, right? In the leading the division, doing what we need to do on third down, keeping Aaron Rodgers upright. So with all that said, I, it's just a matter of production. You know, can we get the ball in the end zone? And, you know, listen, I, I'm another guy we have to kind of keep a close eye on, Mike Williams, mm-hmm. you know? like Came I, off the pup list yesterday, right? Did. He yeah. should be out there today. I know they're having a joint practice with the commanders. I will be out there. I want to see the, I'm gonna see the big fella go. Um, so I'm, I'm excited. Adam Lazard looks like he's back into form because Aaron Rodgers is back. So, Conklin looks great, so I'm I'm excited to see what happens. But you just got to produce and you got to win. Let me ask you this: going back to something you said about you know you kind of know what you are in terms of the team you play for, and you mm-hmm. knew with the Steelers you were going to go in there and you're going to your idea was to just kick their ass and you know, what doesn't matter. And yeah, we, end- our goal was always to set your living room on fire, eat the food out your fridge, and walk out the door. <laughs> I like it. That and you was know always the that's most. why the Steelers never have a losing season. Perhaps that's one of the reasons. Yeah. When you because I used to argue with Joe, and you mentioned him, that's why I'm bringing him up. I used to argue with Joe that. I, Who I, doesn't I, argue with Joe? That's way. very true, especially someone that's a non-Jet fan. And I, I understand <laughs> that, too. I've known him since 94. So I've seen him through ever, the Barcells uh, the Parcells years, yeah. everything. So I used to say to him, you know, the, the concept of same old Jets, I understand from a fan's perspective. But for the most part, these guys on the field have had nothing to do with the Jets, especially when you get drafted. You've been a great player. Mm-hmm. You go to the Jets. Why would you even know about what went on in the 70s and the 80s? When you became a Jet, 
was it hard to block that? Because you're in the league for long enough, hard to block that stuff out, or does it actually enter your mind? It enters your mind when you're not winning, right? Because you walk around the city and everybody has a story to tell you how they started as a Jets fan, why they're currently a Jets fan. And they tell you about the good and the bad. So you walk around and hearing all these stories. At the end of the day, you know, what's was, was, t- was tough covering the Jets, because obviously, you, you know, we do S&Y with mm-hmm. me, Bart, uh, Scott, and Connor Rogers, is the end of the game is always hard for me I've to watch. seen enough of these with you guys to know that the you guys the, get pissed. Well, <laughs> I saw it last year. It's it's because it, it's, a, it's, it's a lot of things. But overall, for me, what breaks my heart, you can see time after time, the fire get let out of these guys. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I, there was one time where I think it was Brees Hall. It was after a loss, and people were just peppering him with questions. He he just didn't have anything to say. Yep, he was just numb. And I've been in that position. I was a part of a four and twelve Jets team, and I was kind of the media darling in the locker room, who's always willing to talk to the media, give be the voice of reason why and 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 you know why we, who we are and what, what what we're not being able to do. And by week eight, you're like, bro, I don't know. Like you just you're just out of answers. Same Nothing, questions, same answers. Yeah, it's the same answers. Yeah. I don't know why we can't protect. I don't know why we can't run the ball. I don't know why defenses. And then part of it, you do know the answers, but you can't let that out. <laughs> you know what I mean? The guy <laughs> next to me sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Just there's some things you just can't say. Yeah. But you know, it, the, the the fans need an answer. They need something. And if they're paying the tickets and they're getting there Sunday and they're and they're they're laying out the super side and they got the sausages going and then they're buttering the rolls and then you know the whole family's there for the day, they need an answer. Yeah. And so you got to be able to give them something. There is nothing worse than when you go for a tailgate, especially if it's your team. It doesn't even matter if it's uh, uh if it's just two independent teams, but it's your team. You're there. You can't wait. You're there at nine o'clock. Game oh. starts at one. You've had a great morning. You go in there and you're down fourteen nothing six minutes into the game. <laughs> It's like, what in the hell was what, today about? What was worse my first year with the Jets, we used to get uh, – Rex used to have this thing. We used to get on – we get in our warm-ups, and we would get on a bus and go through the parking oh, lot. Oh, that's cool. To greet the fans and kind of like our like a little parade yeah. into the stadium. And I remember one time we did it, and I think some of the old guys were on the bus, Lavernius, Coles, and all those guys, uh, and they get off, and everybody's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. everybody's excited. And then we get on, we get off the bus, and it's like, what is it going to look like today, Jets? We win or lose? What are we doing today? <laughs> and you have to do this for like a mile, <laughs> and you're just like, there's like positive energy, and the other side's negative energy, <laughs> and sure. the negative energy are coming from the guys like Beninga, right? Of like, course. hey, am I have to refinance my house? What are we doing? Here? <laughs> and so it's always, it's always a story, man. Boomer always tells a story. He's told it many times when he was playing quarterback for the Jets. When I guess they were losing a game, I don't know the details of it exactly, but. I think there were two fans in the front row calling for him, calling for him. Finally, he goes over thinking he's going to sign something or take a picture or whatever, and they just wanted to tell him that they thought he sucked. <laughs> just fa- first of all, That's NFL tough. fans, period, are brutal. They're brutally honest. Of course. So the, the the worst ones are the, the – no, no offense. I hope I'm, I'm just starting to show. I'm not trying to get canceled. The women give it to you the worst. Really? Yes. When I was in Pittsburgh – this is a real story. When I was in Pittsburgh on Fridays, they used to have Jersey Day, right? And so – Jersey Day throughout the city. So mm-hmm. you'll go out there. Everybody's wearing black and gold in Walmart. So I go to Walmart after the, they go pick up some stuff for the house. And I, I forgot who we were playing. And this lady, uh, I'm going, I'm coming up the aisle and this lady's coming at me. And I'm thinking I'm about to go to, you know, right around, to, you know, go get something. She bumps a cart right into me. Like, right, like, boom, right into me. And she's like, she's like, your name is Willie Colon. I'm like, yes. She's like, I'm a diehard Steeler fan, been a Steeler fan all my life. She goes through the whole, you know, rig and remote. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, thanks. She goes, she's like, can you, uh, can you stop going off sides? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, yes, I'm like, yes, ma'am. She goes, and can you tell Roethlisberger to get rid of the damn ball? I'm like, I'll, I'll be sure to pass the message. She goes, and uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Don't like, love you nothing. Just <laughs> no, and just goes about her way. And I'm just like, and okay. that's the Steelers who do nothing but win. From a little old lady. Yeah. And she, and by you. She looked me right in my eyes. It wasn't like she was like looking. Like she looked right in my eyes, and she was just like, "I'm telling you this from the bottom of my heart. Just, just get it done. Kid. Stop it. It's got to be really cool. You experience both of it. We talk about this all the time. Being in New York, we've got nine pro teams. You got three hockey teams, two yeah. basketball. All right, one and a half basketball teams. You got two baseball teams, two football teams. Um, like Pittsburgh must be really wild in that it's the Steelers and the Steelers only here. As you see, it's just so split. It's it's a religion, um, but I do give Jets fans a lot of credit, man. They're loyal. Uh, you know, it's 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 like an old marriage. Like I, at the sure. beginning, it's you know, it was hot, it was spicy. Now it's like, all right, you know, we've 
we built this life together. I can't leave now. Like, well, that, all my money's invested. Even in the, the fact sports. that, you know, you can say what you want about the Giants. I know it was Yankee Stadium years and years and years ago. But, I mean, growing up, they were in the Meadowlands. They were Correct. there. Mm -hmm. So maybe, you know, people like my dad, who was a big Gi a Giant fan at season tickets at Yankee Stadium, that was shocking for him living in Brooklyn. They go to the Meadowlands. We wind up in Jersey. Not a big deal. The entire Jet fan base is from Queen. Well, not the entire, but most of them are from. No, I understand. That's yeah. a huge shift. I went to Shay. Hofstra. I mean, when I was at Hofstra, they were at Hofstra. Right. I remember walking to cap walking to cafeteria and seeing uh, Testaverde, seeing Mawai with two subs and mm. in, in, in his tight ass tight ass biker shorts. You know, trying to get to <laughs> K. You know, I remember seeing Herm. Herm used to jog our campus. Um, and then sometimes show up at practice to kind of give us like some words of inspiration. So I was connected. Mm. My my first year with the uh, with the team uh, Hofstra, they didn't have pants to fit me. Mm. So they went across the street to the Jets. It's like, hey, we got a big fellow over here that we got to slip into. We need him to slip into some pants. They sent some over with some cleats. So they, I have a this connection with them. So yeah. I was always used to seeing the Jets. And when you talk to people from Queens and Long Island. It's the Jets. It's like, that's the Jets. all they know. They don't. They don't look anywhere else. And that is a grind of a trek to get over to. Brutal. Yeah, I mean, Brutal. to the Meadowlands from Queens on a Sunday morning. But more than that, because the Sunday morning probably isn't so bad. Getting, getting home out of it is just a nightmare. You might as well get a hotel. I, I don't think you're far <laughs> off on that. That's yeah, for sure. Might as well get a hotel. All right, just getting started. We'll take a break. When we come back, we've got Peter Schwartz with all the sounds from last night. Also, your calls. Uh, throughout the course of the morning, 888-808-1019. It is Willie Cologne and myself in for Boomer and Geo on the Fan and CBS Sports Network. Weather's...